So welcome, everyone. Welcome to Bolt Field. Isn't this beautiful out here on a beautiful sunny day? All right. Okay, so my name is Dr. Terry Winfrey, and I'm the president of the Chicago Southland Chamber. And I'm very, very pleased to be here to give a welcome this morning on behalf of our board and the legislative committee. Our legislative committee is the group that plans these events. Um, I would like to start out this morning, there are, uh, um, are some elected officials, and not only elected officials, but those representing agencies and municipalities. So I'd like to uh, first thank them for co coming, and I have them sort of in alpha order by first name. Uh, Amy Ingalls, representing Village of Piatone. Thank you, Amy. Bill Barnes, Village of Moni. Bola Delano, Illinois Office of the Comptroller. Uh, Ed Pazel was a past mayor and also past president of the South Suburban Mayors and Managers. Uh, Marcy Meyer, village of Beecher, and she's got some other colleagues with her. Uh, mayor Joe Rudez, uh, village of University Park. Uh, I mentioned the South Suburban Mayors and Managers. We also have Christy De Laurentiis with us this morning. Um, and another agency that we partner with so often is Reggie Greenwood with the South, uh, Chicago Southland Economic Development Corporation, who we're actually even moving in and being roommates now, so right by the South Suburban Mayors and Managers, so you can visit us all at once. Um, we also have Rick Bryant with us, who is not only a chamber board member, but representing Congresswoman Kelly's office. We have Rick Reinbolt from the village of Richton Park. And then also, I have a couple other board members. Um, in addition to those I already mentioned, um, we have Mark Thompson from uh, Hanson Engineering, who is our host. So let's give him a big round of applause. Yes. They all deserve a round of applause, but our host, who's very generous in providing all of this for us, in addition to the beautiful space. Also, Kate O'Malley, one of the chamber board members. And Craig Schmidt, another board member, also representing Governor State University. Did I miss any elected officials? Okay, all right. So I have two elected officials in the room. One is gonna be our speaker. And the other one that I didn't mention, our chairman of the board, Mayor from Hazelcrest, um, is going to come up and he's gonna introduce our speaker. Um, and before that, I don't wanna forget because I wanna announce our um, hosts, excuse me, our sponsors, Comcast Business, ComEd, CETA, Marquette Bank, and MyJack, in addition to Hanson Engineering. Mayor. Good morning, everyone. I'm Bernard Allsbury, Mayor of the Village of Hazelcrest, and I want to welcome everyone uh, out to the site, the site of the future airport that we're working on. Uh, at this time, I want to introduce our speaker, our Will County Executive, Jennifer Benito Tourette. I got that right, hopefully. Good. That's why I hear you see you over there talking. As a lifelong resident, Jennifer is honored to serve as Will County's Chief Executive Officer. Jennifer is a champion for hardworking families and businesses in Will County and brings an extensive background in education advocacy, advocacy innovation, and public service. Prior to her role as, Cook, as County Executive, Jennifer served two terms in the Illinois General Assembly as a state senator. Jennifer was a leading advocate for public education and was an architect in reforming Illinois' broken educational funding system. Jennifer began her career as a teacher and school principal, which prepared her to lead important initiatives to benefit teachers, students, and their families. She was elected Will County Regional Superintendent of Schools in 2006, where she increased services for at-risk students and advocate for quality professional development opportunities for teachers. Jennifer graduated from St. Francis Academy in Joliet before earning a bachelor's degree from Illinois State University and a master's degree in curriculum and instructions from the University of St. Francis. In 2007, uh, Jennifer completed her doctorate at Loyola University in curriculum instructions. To, at this time, I'd like to bring forward Executive of Will County, Jennifer Tarrant. Jennifer. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me here. 
Um, I appreciate the opportunity to share kind of a big overview of what's going on in, in Will County, although I'm talking to some of the mayors and, um, you know, that's really where our, our excitement lies is in our, in our communities uh, that are bringing so much to, to this area. And, you know, I always say I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to be able uh, to serve in this, this capacity because, you know, statewide, uh, we really have made a, a name for our, ourselves. Not only are we, I would say we're a, a, a huge, huge community. I know we're talking to some people, it takes 40 minutes uh, to get down here st from up north. People are coming from Orland. Uh, but we're a huge community, but we really have this small uh, small community mentality. And I, um, part of the, the reasons I love this so much is no matter where I go, it's always welcoming. And if you ever need a helping hand, someone's always there to say, how can I help you? And we want to help. So I do appreciate everyone uh, being here today. Uh, Terry, thank you very much for, for having me and the Chicago Southland Chamber of Commerce for this invitation. I appreciate everyone who is interested in learning more about county government and what we've accomplished over the last year and what we have planned. Our economy in Will County remains strong, our communities are growing, and Will County continues to be ranked as a top job creator in Illinois. Thanks in great part to our strong local chambers of commerce, I've been invited to ribbon cuttings in all parts of the county for new business and industries that are creating new career opportunities and offering livable wages. I've had the opportunity to work with local leaders who are building vibrant communities that are attracting new residents from all over the country. And I hear stories of hope from people and organizations who are strengthening our safety net and offering a helping hand to our neighbors in need. In my position, I see the important role that county government plays in people's lives. As county executive, I oversee hundreds of employees in a variety of departments that offer services to the public and programs that provide direct assistance to residents and communities. Will County's population continues to grow and we need to be prepared for an increased demand for county services. We are a county of 700,000. While this historic level of growth presents many promising opportunities, county government needs to adapt to respond to a growing list of challenges. Today, I'd like to share with you some of these opportunities, challenges, and how we're working to prepare Will County for the future. First and foremost, the good news. Will County remains a state and national leader in economic development and growth. As you are all aware, we have an amazing Center for Economic Development that closely monitors our economy and how it compares regionally. Here's a list of their latest numbers on our outlook. We ranked number one in Illinois in jobs, industrial development, family housing development, and energy production. More than 15,000 jobs have been created in Will County since 2021, and our unemployment rate is at a historic low. Wages are rising, and we have more people employed in this county than ever before. We're a top manufacturing hub, which is seen in communities in all parts of the county. A few of our high pro profile examples in this area are Provisor Technologies in Mokina, Dutch American Foods in Crete, DuPont in Wilmington, and G&W Electric in Bolingbrook. Our leadership in manufacturing is creating $6 billion in output for the national economy and $1.8 billion in wages locally. All this is making our communities internationally competitive. In partnership with the CED, we have also been working to diversify our economy to provide more opportunities and living wage career options for our residents. Will County recently joined six other northeastern Illinois counties to form a first-of-its-kind partnership focused on economic development. This partnership will help us expand our reach and attract a wider variety of businesses for, from all over the world. Will County has everything we need for growth. A strong workforce, amazing location, an unbeatable transportation energy infrastructure, and quality communities that people want to raise a family in. These factors have made us an increasingly popular destination for a fast-growing sector, the green economy. This was apparent last year when Lion Electric cut the ribbon on the largest electric vehicle manufacturing plant in the country for medium and heavy-duty commercial vehicles, right here in Will County. We're in the right place and the right time to continue to attract green industries and green jobs, and we are working to remain competitive. Along with being the first county in the state to develop an ordinance for battery storage, we recently embarked on our first countywide plan in Illinois to prepare for the continued demand for alternative fuel vehicles. 
as local governments and businesses are working to identify the best location for charging stations and other vehicle infrastructure, this plan will provide them a long-term blueprint for their investments as they plan for the future to meet the needs of their residents and commuters. However, we are not just attracting green energy in Will County, we are producing it. Our renewable natural gas plant is producing pipeline quality gas that is being sold on the open market. By converting gas from our prairie fill landfill into clean transportation fuel, we are helping to power the clean energy revolution in our region. The plan has already raised over $8 million with much more on the way. These efforts are good for our environment and our economy. As a leader in new industries, we can continue to support the growth of high quality and well-paying jobs in our communities. We need to continue efforts to connect residents with sustainable, high-paying jobs, along with supporting growth and mobility. This goal has become more apparent over the last year as both public and private sector employees have faced significant labor shortages. At the county level, our workforce services team is accelerating their efforts to help job seekers attain career success, along with supporting businesses and attracting talent in a tight labor market. They are also offering training grants for employers to, employ, to promote growth within their existing workforce. These incumbent worker grants help employees share the cost of trainings that upskill employers, employees and fill vacancies. Our workforce service team has also increased their focus on connecting youth with opportunities, including through the Connect to Your Future program that provides mentorship training and training in high demand occupations. Another example is their second annual Pathway to Profession Expo that they hosted last month, which connected over 800 students with employers to help them plan their future. Our departments have been innovative in their approach to responding to regional challenges. They have been intentional with their programs and outreach to make the most of what we have. The same principle guided county leadership when we made decisions on how to, get, to utilize the American Rescue Plan Act dollars we received from the federal government. In total, Will County received $134 million in ARPA funds, representing a once-in-a-lifetime investment into our local communities. We've worked hard to ensure that these funds will empower local governments, organizations, and most importantly, our residents. These investments will elevate people. They will create healthier, safer, and stronger communities long into the future. The County Board has approved a list of projects that address key principles such as health care access, food availability, infrastructure needs, economic development, and local government services. There are many examples of this, including a few I'd like to mention. We allocated $7.2 million to support housing development and to address homelessness. We allocated $23.7 million in economic development pro programs, including $3.75 million for the Center of Economic Development to help with small business development and to ensure a more resilient local economy. We've invested in our next generation of heroes in our schools and hospitals by working with our higher education universities, including Governor State, to provide grants for students in education and nursing professions. These are only a few of the dozens of projects that will positively impact all Will County communities. The principle of empowering communities also applies to how we allocate our local infrastructure spending. As a county, we've been working hard to expand our transportation vision to create a more comprehensive infrastructure to, that does more than just connect drivers, but also creates true access to opportunities for all. We've worked closely with our Division of Transportation to increase accessibility and ensure that transportation is fueling our continued growth. This year, we're investing $504 million into our county infrastructure, creating connectivity, increasing capacity, and improving safety. Our DOT is also on track to have the largest annual road improvement plan in county history. This includes several upcoming projects throughout eastern Will County resurfacing of Highway 53, known as Western Avenue, just west of Crete, reconstruction of 80th Avenue in Frankfurt, continued studies and public engagement on what improvements to make to Wilmington Piatone Road. All of these projects are helping us address one of the top regional challenges we face, an increase in freight traffic that is an unfortunate byproduct of continued growth. The county's massive infrastructure Massive investment in infrastructure is aimed at reducing congestion and redirecting truck tra traffic away from residential areas. 
While our DOT has been thinking big on their transportation vision, they have also been intentional in maximizing outside funding. For example, we recently learned that $500,000 in federal funding was included in federal appropriations by Congresswoman Robin Kelly to support Eastern Will County trucking routing projects. So thank you, Rick. You can share that, yeah, thank you. <laughs> this project is a result of years of ad advocacy by local officials to reduce truck congestion in Eastern Will County communities. This federal funding will help DOT study improvements to the Crete Moni Road Corridor with goal of creating a dedicated east-west truck route. By redirecting truck traffic away from local roads, we'll be improving roadway safety throughout Eastern Will County. Making our roads safer has been a top priority for my administration. That's why we're using grant funding to develop Will County's first action plan for roadway safety aimed at reducing fatalities on our roads and creating a safer environment for drivers and pedestrians. The county is also sharing costs with municipalities for building sidewalks and bikeways for the first time to create safer options for pedestrians. We're also working to ensure that this comprehensive vision applies to our long-term planning the Our Way Forward Long Range Plan now is in its first phase will guide county, county projects for the next 25 years. The planning effort applies to transportation for all residents in all parts of the county and I encourage everyone here to get involved with the, this planning effort and share your opinions on how we should invest our transportation dollars. The need for more realistic comprehensive transportation planning vision was what guided our Access Will County Paratransit Study. Utilizing PACE funding, we want to take a close look at how our countywide paratransit systems are serving our most vulnerable populations, such as seniors and people with disabilities. The study examined our 12 existing dial-a-ride systems and collected feedback from over 1,000 residents. The study found several gaps in our system that makes mobility harder for residents and identified areas of the county with limited or no coverage. Our plan outlines a short and long-term roadmap for solutions. While the full implementation of this plan was unfortunately stalled at the county board level, my office is working to implement recommendations from the plan. This includes utilizing a $200,000 increase in funding within this year's budget to expand our Will Ride program to areas that currently do not have dial-a-ride services. These steps will help us eliminate barriers for our residents to live a mobile life and to move regularly throughout the county. All of these initiatives are examples of the critical role that county government plays in supporting continued economic development and ensuring that all residents have access to these opportunities. But we also play an important role in supporting and empowering residents in need. We've been working to improve and expand these efforts to reach more people in all corners of the county. Whether it's working with local partners to host free food giveaways in order to provide healthy groceries to our residents or our community development division's outreach to fund community gardens. Our efforts to assist residents resulted in thousands of pounds of food being distributed and hundreds of families receiving assistance. <laughs> Much of this outreach is based on what we're hearing from community members and local organizations. For example, in the face of rising house costs, our community development division has expanded efforts to keep families in their homes. Our eviction diversion program now in its second year has helped, nearly, has helped connect nearly 700 households with financial assistance to help families stay in their homes. Furthermore, we've been able to use two special funds, which are not county tax dollars, to invest nearly $3 million in public safety and social services. We used our state cannabis sales tax to increase funding for important programs, such as our Children's Advocacy Center operations the court-appointed special advocate program that supports children who experience abuse and neglect, our homeless prevention program, a new re-entry program by our workforce services division aimed at reducing recidivism. We also invested nearly $400,000 in local grants aimed at early childhood development and empowering small businesses and nonprofits. The county also has received funding from the state from a court settlement with companies that produce opioids, contributing to the substance, use, substance abuse crisis being experienced throughout the country. We've invested these funds to address the crisis, including providing mental health services to inmates at our adult, adult detention facility, building improvements at county recovery homes, and boosting our health department's substance abuse program. 
Along with increasing boosting our social service safety net and expanding outreach efforts, we've also expanded our use of digital tools to reach people in need and support those seeking assistance. A significant example is our 211 helpline managed by United Way of Will County. 211 has revolutionized how residents can connect with resources throughout the county, providing a free 24-hour multilingual information and referral system. This is a major change in how residents connect with important local services. Whether assistance is needed with housing, healthcare services, or food support, this service is available to anyone who needs information or referrals. 4,000 residents have already reached out to 211 with over 12,000 referrals. United Way experienced a 63% increase in uses last year. People need assistance, and this tool is helping people connect. Another example is our Ready Will County app. Initiated by our emergency management agency, this new app allows residents to receive real-time emergency alerts and directly access a trusted source of information during an emergency. The importance of this app was apparent earlier this year as communities along the Kankakee River experienced flooding risk due to unprecedented ice jams. Our amazing EMA team was able to keep our communities informed as flood conditions shifted constantly. Across Will County, we're accelerating our efforts to simplify and modernize our service delivery. Our programs can work to elevate and uplift residents and communities throughout the county. While we continue to experience steady economic and population growth, I will end by acknowledging that we cannot ignore the barriers that are limiting continued success. One of the most significant challenges facing Will County in terms of economic development is the lack of housing available in all parts of our county. Will County is number one in the state in single family home construction, a testament to our strong communities attracting new residents from all over the country. Unfortunately, this construction is not meeting the current demand and we are facing significant housing shortages. According to the CED, our available home listings went from a 2,500 monthly average in 2019 to a 2023 average of 788. An available house in Will County spends an average of 37 days on the market. I'm sure many of you have heard stories of houses lasting just days on the market. The cost of buying a house has increased 39% since 2019. This is an unsustainable for a rapid pace of growth and development. We're also beginning conversation with local partners to pursue federal funding to develop a housing market study, which can be used by local government leaders to help address local housing shortages. This study would develop a long-term plan for identifying the best locations for development and what kind of housing is needed in certain areas to meet future needs. These efforts underscore how empowering and elevating our residents is at the forefront of everything we seek to accomplish at a county level. I would like to reiterate that we have much to be optimistic about as a county. I'm proud of what we've been able to accomplish over the last year to support both residents and manage our growth. Everything we've been able to accomplish has been due to strong engagement with active partners in our communities. I invite everyone in this room to feel free to reach out to my office or our department with any ideas or initiatives we can partner on. We know we are most successful when new ideas are brought to the table and we can work together. So I thank you for allowing me to share some of our, our accomplishments over the, next, or the past year and I'm happy to answer any questions if I can. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was great and very informative. Um, there are some flyers that are over there. There is a program here that is with um, Governor State University and D14 School of Extended Learning is offering Fly High. So if you get a moment and talk to Craig, he's going to have you out in an airplane and flying within a month, I think. So. <laughs> So anyway, I think that, you know, here we are, if you feel the good vibes, you know, there's also programs if you're not quite that brave, maybe you want to look at drones or something like that, uh, start there. Um, so, and we also have for the Chamber of Commerce, all kinds of events that are coming up. So we have flyers over there for everything. 
This event, again, we have a government affairs committee. Those of you that are interested in participating and being on committees, it's really hugely important. We plan the events like this. So being a part, you get to network with the people on the committee and help plan uh, the coming events. Our next event that's sponsored by this group, we have lots of other events with other committees and that's what's over there. But we are planning our next, uh, the May legislative series is going to be um, an educational format on how you can protect protect yourself and protect your business from the U.S. Postal. Uh, there's been some fraud happening, not, the, not that the post office is doing it, but it's happening in the process of, of not being able to receive mail. We have some businesses that have been losing over a half a million dollars, so this is not a small problem. It's a very large problem. So uh, the second Tuesday of next month, that will be our topic. We'll go back to being on Zoom. This series is generally a Zoom meeting, but um, she wanted to have it in person. I'm so glad you want to have it in person. No, no. I'm glad you want to have it in person, but a lot of times we'll have a panel and you might have four elected officials and their schedules, it just makes it a little easier via Zoom. So um, stay in network, enjoy this beautiful space, and there's more refreshments. Yeah, Mark is pointing because he doesn't want all the donuts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is not our healthcare committee sponsored event. <laughs> This is our government affairs, so there's lots of sugar. Um, our next health care committee event will have only healthy food. So, uh, but again, thank you all for coming, and make sure you network. You guys all need to network and meet everybody. Have fun. Mm -hmm.